Okay, this question says, a rod of metal is heated in a blacksmith's furnace and then rapidly quenched in ice water. After 10 milliseconds, the temperature at a distance of 10 microns from the surface of the metal has reached 33 degrees Celsius, and the metal has a thermal diffusivity of 4.2 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared per second. What temperature do you think the blacksmith's furnace was at? Okay, this is an example of non-steady state thermal diffusion, right? So the conditions are changing with respect to time. Now, we're going to use our semi-infinite solution to the diffusion equation, which says the following, that the temperature at position x minus the temperature of the bar far away from the surface with the temperature changes occurring, so in the bulk of the metal, over the temperature at the surface minus the temperature within the bulk of the material is equal to 1 minus the error function of x, our distance, divided by 2 square root of alpha t, where alpha is thermal diffusivity of the metal. Okay, so taking a look at this question, we are given x right here, we know the distance, we know the time, 10 milliseconds, we know the thermal diffusivity, we know that the, it says that the temperature 10 microns from the surface, so we need, we know temperature at position x, and we're told that it's quenched in ice water, so we can assume that the temperature at the surface is going to be very close to that. Now that is an assumption, but we're going to assume that for this problem. So the only thing that we don't know in this whole question is Ts, and so, uh, sorry, T naught. T naught is going to be the temperature within the bulk of the material, and that's what the blacksmith's furnace is going to be, right? If you let this sit for a long time, we're going to assume that it's a homogeneous temperature, and that deep within the material, the temperature there will be the same where it was at when it was taken out of the furnace, so you can figure out what the furnace temperature was. So to answer this question, since we don't know Ts, but we know everything else, we can solve for the entire right-hand side of this equation by plugging in values. So let's go ahead and do so. Um, the right-hand side of the equation is going to be, well, let's just do inside the error function. So it's going to be the error function of um, x, which is 10 microns, so let's write that in meters, 10 times 10 to the negative 6 meters, divided by 2 times the square root now. Thermal diffusivity is 4.2. Um, that's going to be multiplied times 10 to the negative sixth meters squared per second. Seconds, it's 10 milliseconds, so that's going to be 10 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds. And we can go ahead and punch all these things in. When you do so, you find out that the error function, it's the error function of, I get 0.0244. Now if we look in our um, table of error functions, we have this provided here. The error function of the value we don't know, but we do know the value, which the table calls z, right? So unfortunately, it, we have zero values for 0 and 0 0.025, but we don't have a value exactly for 0 0.0244. That's not a problem. We can do a linear interpolation. So again, the linear interpolation formula is relatively straightforward. To do it, we write it as follows. We say that z minus z naught, say the value below it or above it, doesn't matter as long as you're consistent, um, and the error function minus error function naught is equal to z1, the value let's say above it, minus z naught, the value below it, over error function above it minus the error function below it. So let's say that these values right here are our zero values, and these values above it right here are our one values, right? In that case, we can go ahead and write this out. Let's give ourselves a little more room. Um, we know what z is. z is um, 0 0.0244, and then the value below it is easy in this case. That's just gonna be zero. The error function we don't know at that exact point, but we do know the value below it is equal to zero. Now the z1, the value above it, that's easy, that's 0 0.025, then minus the value below it, that's zero. Error function above it, that's 0 0.0282, and then minus zero below it. 
So the right-hand side of this equation, when we punch it in, that's equal to 0 0.8865. Rearranging, we find that our error function, right, of z, we could say, is equal to 0 0.0244 divided by 0 0.8865 which I find is equal to 0 0.0275. And that makes sense. That's right here between the 0 and the 0 0.0282, and it's closer to the latter value because our z value was closer to the latter value. Okay, so now that we have that, we can go ahead and finish this question. Uh, to do so, it's relatively straightforward. Give ourselves a little bit more room. We can write that um, since it was 1 minus the error function of all the stuff inside of there equaled t, uh, let's see, x minus t naught over ts minus t naught. We now have 1 minus the, the error function of z, which in our case we just found out is 0 0.0275. That's equal to um, tx, which we know is 33 degrees, minus t naught, which we don't know. T surface, that's going to be zero degrees, we're assuming, minus T naught. So we can go ahead and get, we can multiply both sides by the denominator. Well, first I guess we can subtract 0 0.0275 from 1, and that's going to give us um, 0 0.97248, if I actually include all my digits. If I multiply that by negative T, then we've got negative T naught over there equals 33 minus t naught. If we add t naught to both sides, we're getting quite close now. We end up with 0 0.02752 multiplied by t naught equals 33 degrees. Dividing both sides by 0 0.02752 we find out that T naught is equal to 1200 degrees Celsius, which is a, you know, that might be a typical temperature for a blacksmith to use. So that's how, that's an example of non-steady state thermal transport.